All right, let's talk about one of the best players in football. I wanted to make a video. I have made a video on Parsons already this offseason, kind of. I made a video comparing him to Nick Bosa, saying who is the better player, who would you take right now? Uh, but now I'm just talking about Parsons as a whole. What, you know, how good is is he really, and what makes him so good? First off, let's look at his pro football focus grades, and they're just absurd. I mean, a pass rush grade of over 90 both years he's been in the league, uh, and uh, just overall grade of you know, just shy of 90, just a hair under 90 his rookie year, and then over 90 in 2022. And it's also very much worth mentioning that in 2021, uh, he was not, uh, he didn't get as many snaps as just a pure edge rusher. I do have to think if he did, he probably would have been over 90 that you know, area as well, because that really is where he thrives. He's a good off-ball linebacker, I would say. Again, you look at his coverage grade in 2022, it was 84.9, uh, which is a great grade, although, again, some of that is dropping back into coverage, getting easier assignments, going up against halfback, stuff like that. But still, uh, you know, he's a good coverage linebacker. He's a good linebacker in general, but he's just an elite pass rusher. Well, let's get into the film. Let's talk about what makes him so great, because I think some people always wonder, how is it possible for an edge rusher of Parsons caliber to still consistently get sacks, right? Why don't you just double team him and call it a day? Well, because if you double team him, that still doesn't necessarily make it a day. Something like this, you're going to have, it's not like a full on double team, but he's going to be, you know, chipped here, meaning that you have uh, a halfback who's on the line. He's going to start off, you know, blocking Parsons a little bit, getting Parsons closer towards the middle of the field, uh, which then results in him, you know, being slowed down and allows the right tackle on this play to be able to get the hand placement he wants easier. That's the, you know, the reason why you do this. And then you can still, you know, the halfback can still then go out, run a route. And so you're still impacting the play positively in multiple different areas. Right when this play begins, it's a, I would say, an effective chip. Like, he did what he was trying to do there. I have, I you know, I have no notes really there. I think that was pretty good. Uh, you got to run your route. Okay, good job. You know, mission accomplished there. But this is just where, really, I feel like the one crazy thing about Parsons is how good his hands are. For someone who didn't play this position as much as some other people have, the fact that his hands are so good is really something I think is underrated. Right now, he has his left hand on uh, the right tackle's right sort of shoulder area. Also, this is a side note. I don't know why I do this, but every time I bring up like where someone's hand placement is, I also touch my side of like, I was touching my shoulder when I said shoulder area. Like, I don't know why I do that. That's just something I do. You're only listening to me, not seeing me, but that, that's just how I do it. But anyway, uh, watch what he's gonna do once he gets that hand placement. Look at that power to move him aside, and he is going to be able to uh, get to Matt Stafford and get the sack right there. I'm not sure if he got credit for a full sack or a half sack, but who cares? It was a great play, and you brought down the quarterback. What's the difference of you know what goes in the stat sheet and what doesn't? Very good play from Parsons, uh, and that's something I think I wanted to bring up because I feel like he doesn't get enough credit with the hand placement. There's some things that he gets credit for but are still fun to talk about. For example, this one, how's that for a segue? What's going to happen here is, once again, uh, going up against the right tackle. This time, just a one-on-one -on -one matchup, though. And watch what he's going to do. It's really going to be the, the explosiveness. He is so explosive off the line. It's like him and TJ Watt are like the only two guys who are that explosive. You could maybe even argue Parsons is a hair just more explosive than Watt is. They're both so quick off the line. But watch what Parsons is going to do with that speed on this play. Watch him get to the side and right here, again, that right hand, so important. You see how it's on Parsons' left shoulder right there, which is actually not a bad hand placement in a vacuum. That's kind of where you would want your hand placement to be. The issue is just how far over he currently is. In an ideal scenario, honestly, uh, you'd rather be probably a good yard or two further, you know, kind of closer towards your quarterback and definitely further over. I mean, you see how, you know, where uh, the tackle's feet are compared to Parsons' feet. Really, I mean, unless Parsons is going to run directly to the center, you're not in a great position. So while, yes, the hand placement is there, he didn't have time to get the feet over. And because of that, it's just going to be so hard to really be able to get much power on Parsons. As you see, he really, I mean, could have maybe even been called for a hold. I guess, you know, they decided not quite enough, but it didn't matter. Parsons got there anyway. I wonder if uh, Parsons didn't get there, would the flag have come out? I don't know. But uh, either way, that was a very good play from Micah Parsons to be able to 
to pull something like that off. And it's just that speed that he was able to do it with. And I guess you could argue, uh, you know, I, it probably was technically a rip move, which is why the hold didn't happen. He did kind of get his right arm under, uh, Parsons got his right arm under the tackle's right arm. So that's why it wasn't a hold. Uh, so, but, you know, it was just a great play. It really, I mean, kind of what's crazy about it is it happened so quick. It really didn't even feel like a rip move. It just felt like he just ran there and got there that quickly uh, to the point where the hand couldn't really get over. You also have something like this, where he's going to be going up one-on-one -on -one against Christian Derrissaw. Really good left tackle. In fact, you could argue an elite left tackle for Minnesota. He was great last year, but, you know, Parsons is great in his own right. Okay, listen, you know, good pass rushers can win in one-on-one -on -one situations. But the reality is, you typically expect one, even if it's like a not great uh, tackle going up against a great pass rusher, typically in that situation, you still expect that tackle to win you know more often than not offensive linemen win that's how it works if you have you know one sack in a game you had a great game that that's typically how that works so okay really good tackle really good edge rusher what's gonna happen right off the bat watch how Parsons is gonna get you know he, got, he gets his left hand onto Darisaw right there that's gonna be very important because he's not allowing Darisaw to fully get his left hand onto Parsons' right, you know, peck shoulder area. That's that's kind of why, uh, you know, Parsons is doing this, just disrupting Darisaw a little bit. Eventually, Darisaw does kind of get his hand placement close to where he wants it, but Parsons now has his right arm on Darisaw's left wrist. And again, hands are so important in these types of situations. Watch how he's able to knock it away, and then he has the speed to track down Cousins and knock the football out. Dallas recovered, and you know, we're able to get the fumble recovery. I mean, that's just a great play from Parsons, and you know, to be able to beat one of the best tackles in the league doing it, yeah, that's pretty pretty great. Also, stuff like this, this is now not Darisaw he's going up against. But anyway, what's going to happen is it's a it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup. And watch how when this play begins, watch this kind of inside rip move where he gets that right hand up to the point where, again, it's the hand placement. For the tackle, his you know right hand now is what he's trying to use. But it's very similar to the first play I showed you. While it might be over, he doesn't really have the grip that he wants. He doesn't have a defeat where he wants to be able to make this work. Parsons blows right by him and, again, is able to get that immediate sack. Parsons is just one of those players where it's like you pretty much have to double-team him on every play or it's not going to go well. And even if you do double-team him, there's still a very good chance it's not going to go well. He disrupts your game plan. You have to game plan around him. And even when you do, he still finds ways to be impactful. And that, to me, is the true test of an elite pass rusher. So, yeah. Those are my thoughts with Parsons. I think that he's fantastic and one of the better pass rushers in the league, if not the best uh, pass rusher in the league. I don't think he's the best pass rusher in the league. I have a couple guys ahead of him, but he's, you know, a top five for sure, I think. And, you know, uh, probably not number five. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.